Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about another soil amendment, which is a part of the soil amendment series. That is mycorrhizal fungi. I'm going to put this into a two part series. The first part is going to be about the science. And then the second part is going to be the commercial additive side. I could not put this all into one video and capture your intention the entire time. And this is a topic I'm incredibly passionate about. So I w thank you guys so much for asking about it. I'm definitely looking forward to filming these videos. The reason why I enjoy this topic so much is because I actually spent time in the field researching the commercial side of these products. I cannot say what product it was. I can't even say what company it was for just due to NDA purposes but I can give you a sneak peek into the science and a little bit of a sneak peek on the money grab commercial side of this soil amendment. So what exactly is mycorrhizal fungi? Well, it is a fungi that does not have a fruiting body, meaning it doesn't have the typical mushroom look to it. And it actually kind of looks like cobwebs or almost like an extension of your plant root. You probably have seen this, um, especially when you're putting your stuff out in the garden in the spring, you'll notice this uh, very fine filament. That filament, in some cases, may be mycorrhizal fungi. There are over 400 different strains and each one of those strains actually has a specific relationship with a specific type of plant. So if you combine the wrong strain with the wrong plant, you will not make a connection there because it wasn't able to form any sort of symbiotic relationship. This also means that depending on your soil, if it's a potting soil or a garden soil, if you're not using proper crop rotation, you may have a high level of one strain in your soil and you actually over time will start to deplete the other strains in your soil. That is why crop rotation is so important. So you can keep all those colonies higher um, and you don't have one dominating or monopolizing the soil profile. So what is the purpose of the mycorrhizal fungi? Why would you want to add this into your soil or why would you want to nourish it and ensure it continues to thrive in your soil for years and years to come? Well, there's actually quite a few different purposes, but in the sense of house plants, it's actually incredibly beneficial for the winter months. When the sun tends to get shorter, if we don't use grow lights or we're rotating between grow lights, what ends up happening is we don't photosynthesize as much. With this lack of photosynthesis, our plant isn't able, actually able to obtain sugars. These sugars is what helps this plant grow, gain new blooms, gain more leaves, and a higher root mass. The mycorrhizal fungi doesn't need photosynthesis to produce sugars and is able to deliver carbohydrates and sugars to the plant without the usage of photosynthesis. In a outdoor or a garden setting, there's actually quite a few purposes to this. Obviously, there's the reach, the farther reach for nutrients, but there's also the ability to withstand drought better because it has a larger reach into the soil, both down and sideways, it is able to obtain more water for your plant, especially if you forgot to water or you have a very hot summer. Something really interesting about mycorrhizal fungi is that if you have it in a garden, say a perennial garden or in your flower beds, your vegetable gardens outdoors, over time, if you're able to nourish this fungi, plant relationship, you will end up with a network. This network is called the mycelia network. And essentially what it does is it interconnects all your plants. This can take years to form. However, once it does form, it benefits all the plants across the entire flower bed or across the entire systems. This is actually very well documented in forest soils. This hyphae or this interconnection interconnected network allows for the exchange of nutrients and water throughout the entire system. So you can see why it is so valuable. So there are two different types of mycorrhizal fungi 
beyond the fact that there's 400 different species, there's the ecto and the endo. Most commercial products are the endo. So that means it's actually able to penetrate the plant's roots and form an actual connection to the plant itself. The ecto actually just sits on the outside or the surface of the root and it doesn't penetrate into it. There is a natural presence in soil outdoors, which would be your ground soil, but there is typically not a natural presence in potting soil unless it's been added into the potting soil itself, whether that be through an inoculant or through a potting soil that says that it's infused or enhanced with. So there are a few different ways to preserve these, this fungi and these spores in your soil. If you have potting soil, there are some key things that you will want to keep in mind. Potting soil and mycorrhizal fungi and keeping the two alive for an entire growing season or in any capacity is very difficult because mycorrhizal fungi really does not like heat. So if you have your potting soil in heat and you're noticing it's getting hot, you, your microbes are probably not doing too hot. The other thing is, is if you are sterilizing your soil using an oven or any sort of heating mechanism, this is not good. You are damaging both the spores and how they survive all the way to the fungi that is also alive. So please do not heat your soil up in the oven. I know it's a very popular, popular trend, but it is not good in any regard when it comes to a peat moss or coconut choir based soil. You also don't want to heavily fertilize. You want to make sure you're following the directions on the outside of the label. Don't go with too much. The more salt you add into the system, the more your fungi and your spores will suffer. One thing you can do to preserve it though is actually adding a top dressing of manure or compost to the tops of your pots. What this is going to do over time as you water, it's going to leach down into the system, which is actually going to feed that mycorrhizal fungi and keep it happy and healthy and multiplying exponentially. So do not shy away from top dressing, house plants, vegetables, whatever it is. If it's in a pot, top dress with some sort of manure or compost. But the biggest thing beyond fertilizer and all that stuff is just really try to prevent the solarization of your soil, meaning the heating of your soil. For garden soil, it follows the same rules. You don't want it to heat up. You also want to top dress with a manure or a compost. But in order to achieve that network, that mycelial network, the hyphae reach, you actually don't want to till your soil either. That means no rototillers, no shovels. You need to have a no dig garden. The problem with this is even if you say once a year, that's it, that's all I do it, it can ruin years of buildup of that hyphae and it will take years to redevelop. So please try to avoid it at all costs. Now what you can do, you can obviously dig to plant your plants in the ground. That's not going to harm it, but it's the actual rototilling and the tilling of the entire surface. Pesticides are obviously also going to harm the fungi, whether that be for pests, as in insects, or if it's a herbicide in the sense of weeds. Both of these products are going to hurt or harm that fungi family. Then again, solarization. So if you're an organic gardener and you're using uh, plastics or some way to heat the soil in hopes of forcing those weed seeds out, then you are potentially harming your fungi. The good news is, is that if you live in a cold climate, the fungi that's naturally occurring in your soil actually is probably designed to withstand cold weather. So the cold isn't too much of a factor. It's the heat that tends to ruin those colonies. That is all I have for the science on the mycorrhizal fungi, how to keep it alive, what it does, all that fun stuff. The next video is going to be on the commercial side and the additives, what to look for and to maybe help you determine whether or not you want to spend your money in that area. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you even knew this existed. Um, I'd be interested to know. I know it's a very new hot topic on, on in the plant world. Um, so I'm sure you've seen the pro mix stuff before. Anyways, I digress. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.